Hi guys, welcome back to Garage Tech. In this video, I'm going to show you this Think Car Think Diag diagnostic tool. This is a great, fantastic diagnostic tool to use if you want something that's quick and easy. It's on your phone, so it's on Apple and Android. Uh, you download the software onto your phone. And what I think is really great about this tool um, is you don't particularly need a Wi-Fi connection or cellular data to actually use some of the functions on it. So once you've downloaded your software and you can either download the whole package, if you go and check the Think Car uh, website, you can have a look on there, um, but you can either download absolutely everything and then you've got every single manufacturer. It's, there's everything on there, trust me. Um, or you can just download your individual um, manufacturer that, that you particularly want. So, if, you know, if you're working in BMW, for example, and you just want the BMW software, you can go and get that one. Or you can purchase the whole the whole suite of every single manufacturer. Um, as I said, what's great about this one is you've got it, the data uh, and the information is on your phone. So to do the basic functions like doing a health check report, um, checking your fault codes, erasing your fault codes, um, doing some of the um, service lights, so resetting service lights, for example. Um, this tool is actually really easy to use. Um, I've used a couple of um, Volkswagen Group uh, tools before. I won't mention any names, um, but I'm sure we've all seen and heard of those ones. And, and actually, I find that a little bit tricky to use because you need to know all of the different settings that you're going into. And particularly when you've got fixed and um, flexible service regimes, there's quite a lot of different data blocks you have to go into and reset them and put in the the, the, the mileage and put in the um, the dates, etc. Whereas this one, it's quite assisted and it goes through and does it for you in certain uh, vehicles and model years. Um, I'm going to show you um, how to reset the service light on my Porsche um, so you can see that uh, in a moment. But you can also go through and check some of the uh, measure value blocks or data blocks. So if you want to go and check your coolant temperature sensor or your air mass meter or something along those lines, you can go and read the values. You can plot it on a graph. Obviously, you can go off on the drive and, and let it run whilst it's doing its thing. And you record it and it saves it all to your phone and all of that sort of stuff. So this is a really great tool um, to use. Well, so whether you're just an enthusiast and you just want it for your own car just to mess around and do some bits, or maybe you are a bit of a technician and you do some bits at the weekend and you fancy a bit of a tool to use um, on various different uh, manufacturers, uh, this is a really, really good tool. So I'm just going to show you this on my Porsche now. I'm just going to show you um, a couple of bits, resetting the service light, checking some fault codes, erasing them, and, and checking some of those data blocks. So. Go check the guys out. Uh, I'll put the website link in the description below so you can go and check uh, the site for it. Um, as I said, um, I've used it on quite a few manufacturers before and it is a great tool. So enough with that. Let's go check it out in the car. Right. So first thing you need to do is find your diagnostic port and plug it in. So on this uh, Porsche, it's up underneath the passenger uh, footwell. So it's up underneath there. And you can just sit there. Once that's in and it's in properly, uh, the light on the bottom, there's this part here, lights up and it's um, green. Um, so then you know it's in the right position. Now, one thing that I have found on some of the, um, on one of the Audis that I've, I've used it on, um, the way that um, the trim is around with the diagnostic port meant I couldn't push it fully in. So that was a little bit of a challenge. So I had to take the actual plug out of the back of the trim uh, and then plug it in. Uh, but on this Porsche, it works okay and some other Audis I've tried it on, it works okay too. So you just need to check if you if you can't push it all the way in, just need to have a look at the trim around the outside um, to make sure that you can push it all the way in. Now it either, either goes one of two ways. So if it's not quite right, just twist it round. There we go. So that's in now, you see it's gone green and then you just need to connect it to your phone. So, so load up the Think Diag um, app. And then obviously you create your account, etc. And then for this, and I'm going to go to system uh, diagnosis. But before I do that, obviously you need to make sure that your ignition is turned on. So ignition's on. You can see I've got a service light on. Once I'm in now, I'm just going to go to all system diagnosis, and then vehicle scan. So you hear it bleeping. Now see it's flashing. Once that's happening, you can see this. Comes up with some of my vehicle info. 
chassis number, etc. Right now, then I can either do a uh, health report, which will do a full system scan, or I can go in and um, select some certain um, menus. So first thing I'm going to do is a health report. Now, now I've got quite a few faults in because um, I've had the battery disconnected. I've pulled a couple of fuses out, so I know there's some um, faults that I definitely need to erase. So this is the full system or health check. So you can see how fast this goes through. It's got a little timer at the top, so you can see. It's telling me that uh, it's going through the menus. So there we go, it's done a full system scan in about 30 seconds. You can see I've got quite a number of faults in there. As I said, I know I've got quite a few faults in here because as I said, I've uh, had a couple of fuses pulled out and bits and pieces. So for example, if we go into my engine, I can then go read fault code. And you can see, yep, fuel pump, because I had the uh, fuel pump and the ignition coils disconnected. So what I can do then is erase those. So if I go back and I go clear fault codes, Confirm, and then I can confirm that. There we go, and then I can read fault code again. No DTCs, so that's the engine cleared. Uh, next, what I want to show you now is um, resetting the service light. As I said to you before, I've got a service light on there. I've got a load of other faults in there which I know, so I'll come back and clear those later, or I can hit at the bottom there, clear. Uh, DTCs, so if I hit that, I want to clear the whole memory and it will run through. Taking a little bit longer this time because obviously I had to go through and actually erase them, but you can now see I'm um, okay, 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 a okay. If you hit down um, the little arrow there, you can do a fault report and you can do a rescan, but that's it. So that's all of those faults cleared. Now I can go back. Um, so next now, what I want to do is reset my service light. So I'll just show you my service light on. So let me just get into a thingy. So info, messages, okay, service. Okay, so service now. So I need to reset that. So on the device, go to select system, instrument cluster, uh, service reset. Now I've got different model years here now. So obviously this is a 2009 uh, onwards. So I'll go 2009 model year. It's in miles. And then we've got what country we're in, so other USA, Japan, etc., Europe. So I'm in Europe. Please input the current year. So the current year is 2021. Current month, so we're now in May. date and uh, the date today is I think it's the third I can't even remember so it's now done something because it all flicked up so now if we go to Info. There we go. So now my service is now due in 19,900 miles, 730 days. So that's my service light now reset. Okay. So if I just go back from there, it's also reset my clock. 
which is a bit annoying. But hey ho, that's that all done. So obviously on here now it says uh, confirm it's done successfully. So confirm. I'm just going to check any fault codes. No DTCs. Um, some of the other bits and pieces you can do, you can go to maintenance function and then you can go into these if you had uh, brake calipers they had to rewind um, to do uh, um, some brakes on the rear, obviously with electronic handbrakes, you've got EGR, you've got tyre pressure sensors, DPF stuff here. So I haven't had a chance to use any of these ones yet, but um, as you can kind of see there's loads of different kind of uh, functions that you can use. Uh, if you go to OBD functions, it does a scan again. Okay, so gives me some information on there. Readiness complete. Obviously, if you know anything about your readiness codes, so readiness not complete, obviously, because I've generally had uh, the battery off cut a few times so the readiness codes is is its own self basic settings that it does um, and it gives you a bit more information so if I go okay so I can then read some of the data here freeze frames etc clear some codes so I can read the read readiness codes read some data streams so if I want to for example let's have a look at my engine cool oh, engine coolant temperature I can go confirm there we go so currently we are on 61 degrees okay which is probably about right if you see on my gauge so now I can record that put it on to record so if you're driving and you think you're peaking at a temperature and you can save it yeah so I save that so I can go back and search for that later um what else have we got then so let's go back so you got your short uh, trim fuel trim bank one and bank two if you know what this is it's about your lambda probes so it gives you some information here. Obviously, I need my engine running for this, uh, really. So it can give you your fuel trim readings, um, engine RPM, vehicle speed, uh, intake air temperature. Let's see if we've got anything for that. So it's quite hot, isn't it? 69 degrees. Obviously, my car's been sat now, turned off for some time. So you generally find that will increase. But it's a good one to look at if you are doing any modifications to the intake system. So you can check, see... Um, if it's uh, made any difference, you've got air flow rate, mass meter, obviously I'm not going to read anything on there. Um, oxygen sensor, fuel rail pressure, sorry, phone's slipping up my hand. So we're in kilopascals there. So it's just going to give you a flat line on the graph. I'll tell you what we could look at actually is throttle position because I can operate that one. Let's find that one. Relative throttle position. Okay, so down the bottom here as well, we've got absolute throttle position, um, different throttle positions because typically your accelerate, accelerator pedal sensor has two sensors within it. So you can see that. Uh, so I press the accelerator pedal. It's working lovely job uh, oh let me just go back on sex we should be able to see that graphing shouldn't we okay so as I press the accelerator pedal you can see the graphs going up and down and every time I kind of give it a little bit of a pause Kind of puts that little dot on there. Right. So there we go. So you can select multiple ones of those at one time. If 
or doing any uh, data reading. Cool. Well, that's it, guys. That's a quick um, overview. If you're looking for one uh, and you're not sure what to get, I would recommend this. This is a really, really good tool. As I said, it's um, relatively uh, well priced as well. If you think everything you get on it um, and all the functions that you can do, you don't have to purchase anything else once you've got your manufacturer, one that you want. Um, and there's loads that you can do on it. So, um, yeah, really, really good. Really pleased with it. Um, and if you want to, to grab yourself one of these, I've got the link in the description below. So go check it out. Okay, guys. Well, thanks for watching. Take care and enjoy.